The first Friday in September is National Lazy Moms Day. <laughs> delegates every day. <laughs> moms, they, they delegate um, every day mom's job to someone else. Now, busy moms know that the work of being a parent is never done. It is your reminder to lend a hand and give your mom a much-deserved break from her daily task. So moms, take a break today. Put your feet up and just be lazy. But the first thing is can, can, is there? I just think he said, I was like, oh, well, why are you oh, telling me this to me? Like, I, seriously, should I think you should have woken me up with this Thank morning. Thank you. Wow. I don't have an excuse not to go to work. You can move it to tomorrow. Like you can move it to tomorrow. <laughs> this came in late. I think you take it tomorrow. It's very late. So you you just do it tomorrow. Observe it tomorrow. We have to. Today, what's today's date? Uh, fourth. No, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow will be September. Tomorrow will be This is late. This is the kind of thing that so. you make a plaque and I just hand it to my door. Exactly. Mom's day off. We're not talking. We're not doing anything. Don't bother me. Don't bother me. Don't talk to me. Keep out. Okay. Take note for next year, please. I, I'll sure do, do so, by all means. Oh, <laughs> all right, so what, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so my story is... Um, <laughs> Do I laugh? I don't even know where to start. Definitely. So the headline says, EFCC detains woman over 3 million naira job scam. Hmm. Now this story says the EFCC has arrested a Hadja Hadiza Abubakar, Umar Abubakar for defrauding a job seeker of 3 million naira hmm. with a promise of securing employment at the EFCC. Wow. Now, to make it worse, it says that the, the client or the job seeker hmm was into, um, made an arrangement with the client, and the, client, the lady charged him six million naira, hmm. claiming she would be, an, uh, be able to secure him a job at the EFCC, which he then paid half of the money, and in <laughs> trying to withdraw the money, she was, they were arrested at the bank, her son was arrested, then she was arrested. Now, why I found this story interesting Time was, many angles. six <sighs> million naira to work to secure, EFCC. not to work To secure, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. To get a job at the EFCC. What, what at the EFCC is worth six, six million, million naira. naira. And for someone that can gather six million naira. Or three million naira to pay. Thank you, my sister. Three million naira. Fair but you even that. agreed to six, meaning you had a plan. <laughs> no, wait, but I want to, I want to understand six. something, though. So um, how much is the role <laughs> that you are aiming for the job uh, <laughs> position? You know, that you are willing to pay six million naira. So, given me. that it is in the employ of the government, let's not speak about the role, the, hmm. the, the, how much is the role, because that would just blow this wide. That's fact finding. But I just would like to ask what is it that you expect to find there? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That, that you are willing to pay six out that amount. Amount of six million naira. Hmm. Just food for thought. That's why I thought Both this of story them should be arrested. <laughs> so you will tear the and the And perpetrate the Because you are fraudulent. Yes, yeah, you are fraudulent. And fraudulent. you should not be, and you should not be working in, in an anti fraud. I think of it from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be working only, in an anti crisis. Only in Nigeria mm. do you pay a bribe to, to work in, in an anti in a, an, an anti criminal. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll, I think I'll end my story there. I think you should yeah. end it there. Mm. <laughs> Leave it for you people to decide. Mm. <laughs> you see, what should you mm. find? You know, we are all aware that now that uh, everything has skyrocketed. Um, fuel, Prices, dollar. Fuel, um, electricity, everything is high. Going up, yeah. You know, so for once I will agree with former Senator Dinol Malaye who says that increasing pump price of fuel is wicked and insensitive mm -hmm. by oh, the government. Is uh, he's saying that they shouldn't have done it at this point in time, mm -hmm. basically because we're just coming out from COVID. And um, the former Vice President um, Atiku Abubakar even put it in a, in a uniform, euphemistic way he, when he said that this is this time, what did he say now? He said electricity tariff increase is ill-timed. The government shouldn't have done this. Mm -hmm. To me, this administration has failed to okay. bankroll. Let me, let me, let me borrow FFK's <laughs> words or the journalist that says bankroll. Okay, the government has bank has failed to bankroll Nigerian citizens where it matters, and it's and you like think it is fuel scarcity. I mean, fuel price increase that is causing this. You see, mm. you see uh, when they did that Occupy Nigeria, I didn't even get up from my bed. Not to <laughs> say I want to go and sit down in one or other. No, but the truth is, mm. I have driven on roads outside of this country in 
fuel is not cheap anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap. So, <laughs> go ahead. I was even going. Okay. The people mm -hmm. that are bringing the, the fuel fuels. in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they should do it for free. Mm -hmm. Or the government should find money. It doesn't have. They keep so saying. So that the timing will be right. They no, no, no. I'm just, I just want to make sure. You should look at it. And then, see, no, the government so is, pass the PIB. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. only place for me where the government is in the wrong. How about you just pass the PIB mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that we all get used to market forces determining the value the, the, of yeah, petrol. petrol? But when you feel that the government has some check mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. where they're just going to pull out money, mm -hmm. you don't have refineries. Yeah. Your crude is selling for, you know, I don't want to say less peanuts. Than. Your, your cost of foreign exchange is skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> At some point, it has to get to you. Absolutely. So it will come Do back you know, to the if masses? It, and yes, if it's not fair. And we, sorry, we will unfortunately, need to move on. It's, it's, this it's is actually a, a hot topic. It's a reality, yeah. but we will need to move on. Uh, because it's a, a ripple, ripple, it's a ripple effect well, on, see, let me tell you on the masses. Yes, it's, it's okay for them to sit down the there and say it's ill-timed. But I the truth is that if we had allowed that subsidy to be removed, when they did that Occupy Nigeria, it would be fine by now. You know, My go ahead. Um, okay, if so I'll, I'll just go even to if say they that remove it, whoever they remove it, anything can government now will take the same action. So let's just leave it. It's just that it's the person that is sitting there that is sitting there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> over to my story. Um, my story is taken from Punch newspaper, which says Ghana will review the one million capital for Nigerian traders. And if you remember, two weeks ago mm -hmm. I brought up yes that <laughs> that. Um, topic to the story saying that you know they've really been harassing our people but mm. i'm so happy about this news and that's why i'm taking it it's that Bajamila, uh, Baja, Mila. exactly i'm mm. so sorry for murdering your name <laughs> i've led a delegation <laughs> of yes uh, members of the house to a two-day talk with the, the um, legislature from ghana and i'm very happy you know why mm. it is changing the narrative that our leaders don't care Mm -hmm. about Nigerians in diaspora. Mm -hmm. So it just gives me so much joy. And I decided I was going to do a follow-up on it. And, and that's a takeaway for me, mm -hmm. that they're bothered about honest Nigerian citizens making a living and also expanding our business acumen. Across the border. Yes, Absolutely. and they're concerned about that. So and the, the, the president has promised that this is going to be reviewed and they're going to take care of it. All right, so my story is actually quite simple and easy. Lady was arrested for alleged cyber bully and blackmail. So apparently this girl wrote a, she went on Facebook to post something about peace mass, mass transit, saying that um, they had a 18 seater bus that had an accident and killed everybody. Mm -hmm. And she was um, writing to the company and demanding for, for money funds. that if they don't pay her the money, um, she would, um, she would uh, make sure that their business comes to an end. I'm very happy wow. that they took it up. I mean, the police have arrested her, mm -hmm. you know, they went the legal route. And I'm so happy because today we're talking women in journalism, mm -hmm. you know, it, these are the part of the things that they see that we Emotional too, creatures. do you understand? We, we, it, it, and, and, they, and the people that are doing the things wrong, um, doing wrong things in the media, they are much more than the people that are mm -hmm. getting it right. right. You know, so imagine now, she is blackmailing these people, saying that if you don't pay this money, we won't, um, we won't move forward, I will run your business out of town and all that. I'm happy that they went through there and the police have arrested her and hopefully she'll be prosecuted and, you know, should be jailed or something, whatever it is that the penalties are. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm happy that people are standing up to black. Men. Absolutely, it remind me of, um, reminded me of Kevin Hart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So I, I'm, I'm glad that he stood up to the. All right, men. so we'll see you after the break to discuss women in journalism. Stay with us. We'll be right back.